So I'm going to start recording now because uh, we're going to enter our lab mode. And I have a setup for us here where we're going to uh, do lenses and telescopes. Today you're going to learn how to build a, a very simple telescope known as a refracting telescope or a, uh, a Keplerian refractor. This is similar to the first telescope that Galileo made, but it uses two uh, convex lenses. And let me tell you a little bit about this, what we're doing here before we get going. Uh, in my hands over here, I have a convex lens. And a convex lens is basically the, the same thing as a magnifying glass, like Sherlock Holmes might use to investigate a clue, okay? Uh, just like a magnifying glass. And a convex lens has uh, some certain properties to it. Let's take a look at uh, my share screen here. And let's go to my slideshow. And let's take a look at how a convex lens works here uh, in slide 107. Five one zero oh, seven. Okay, so light from a distant object, like either the sun or the moon, is going to come uh, from a distance, and the rays of light are going to strike our magnifying glass. Now, one of the things we learn about in our early astronomy lectures is that astronomical objects like the sun or the moon, they are so far away that all the rays of light that we receive from them are essentially parallel to one another. So these are parallel rays from the sun or from the moon. When they strike the glass of a convex lens, the light strikes the glass at a variety of different angles, and all the light is brought to a single point called a focus point. Now, if you were a little pyromaniac like me, you know all about the focus point of a lens. That's the point where you can uh, do any light source here. Make light source. I put my light source right here. In a magnifying glass, let's see if you guys can see this. This is where I can bring all the light from my little light bulb into a microscopic little dot. And actually I'm creating a little image of that light bulb right now. That point right there is called the focus point of your lens. And the focus point of a lens is sort of the most important part of the lens. Uh, it's, it's what a lens is designed for. <clears throat> Let's go back to share screen for just a moment here. Okay, so the distance from the lens to that point where you can concentrate all the sunlight and burn a little leaf or something, that distance is called the focal length of a lens. And for a convex lens, the whole purpose of the lens is to take light and bring it to a focus point. You can actually make a little image of the object if you place a screen there. Almost every optical system in nature uses some type of a lens, from a camera to your eyeball. Let's cut open your eye. Ah! If you do that, you look inside and you see that there's a little gooey convex sac called the lens. And it works just like a normal lens does. It brings light to a single point called a focus point at the back wall or retina of your eye. And from there, the light is converted into a uh, a chemical signal that goes to your brain so you can say something like, hmm, purple ice cream or something. One of the things we learn about lenses as we play around with them is that the image that lenses make is always inverted when we see it on a screen. And that's kind of cool because it means that everything that you see in your field of view with your naked eye, everything that you're looking at is actually upside down. It's just that you've never thought of it as upside down before because it's always been right side up. Huh, that's weird. Anyways, um, you're gonna notice today that in our setup, we're gonna use a bunch of lenses and we're gonna attempt to build a telescope from it. Let's take a quick look at a picture of a refracting telescope. Let me move ahead here. There are many different telescope designs and we really don't have time to get into all of them. But the type of telescope that you're gonna build today basically just uses two of these convex lenses. One of them is called the objective lens, and that's the lens that gathers the starlight. The other lens is called an eyepiece, and that's what your eyeball looks into. And at its most basic design, there's an objective lens and an eyepiece lens, 
And if you separate the two lenses by the sum of their focal lengths, you can get the light to come out on the other side parallel once again. Now students, let's have a thought about this. Parallel light comes in from the moon. It's brought to a focus point at the focal length of your objective lens. Then we bring the eyepiece lens in. The eyepiece has a slightly different focal length. And if I put the distance from the focus point to the lens, equal to the focal length of the eyepiece, the light comes out parallel once again. Parallel rays of light come into my telescope. Parallel rays of light come out of my telescope. Students, what did the telescope do for me? What's the function of this telescope? Made the image smaller. Well, do we want to make images smaller or bigger? Do we want to change the size of an object? Can we change the size of an object? It does look like that, Jace. It looks like we've made the object smaller. But that doesn't seem very helpful, does it? Brought it closer. When we talk about closeness or farness, we're actually talking about angular size, right? Remember that Rainbow ball has some physical size, like I think it's the diameter of this ball is 20 centimeters. But you don't see rainbow ball as 20 centimeters, you see it as an angle. Now we might be looking at it through the eye of our camera, but cameras also see angles too, just like eyeballs do. My finger, for instance, has a width of about a centimeter. If I put it up in front of the camera, my finger blocks the whole thing. If I move my finger farther and farther and farther away from the camera, the angular size of my finger gets smaller. When we talk about bringing something closer, Jace, what you really meant is you meant to change the angular size. And yes, telescopes do do that. Telescopes change the angular size of an object. To see magnification, though, is a little bit difficult. Uh, let me just show you uh, magnification refracting telescope. A ray diagram like this one will explain how magnification works. Uh, images. Yeah. Let's look at one of these pictures here. This ray diagram attempts to show us how magnification works. <clears throat> Sorry guys, I'm trying to magnify this. <clears throat> Let me try this one. Actually, you know what? I like this one the best. Okay. Uh, once again, con oh, it's control plus. There we go. Now, this is a little bit fuzzy, but when light comes in... Uh, I'm sorry. I was hoping to show you a cleaner diagram, but I'm afraid uh, I'm afraid I don't have it here. Okay, well, just stick with what you know, Brendan. You know this. I know this slide, so we'll work with this one. Okay, light from a like. Let's imagine we're looking at the moon, and we're looking at a little crater on the moon. That crater on the moon subtends some angle between the principal axis and this ray here, and that angle is called alpha. As the rays of light pass through your telescope, they're bent back, and the angle of that crater becomes larger. It becomes the angle beta. Now, you guys can probably see in this ray diagram here that the angle beta is larger than the angle alpha by the ratio of their focal lengths. So what we say for telescopes is for refracting telescopes, let's go to speaker mode here. For refracting telescopes, you have an objective focal length and you have an eyepiece focal length. Those are the focal lengths associated with your two lenses. And the magnification is the focal length of the objective divided by the focal length of the eyepiece. 
Magnification is useful if you're looking at something like the moon and you want to magnify craters to give them a larger angular size. But magnification is not the only purpose of a telescope. The reason why can be seen if you look at a picture of a famous object like the Andromeda Galaxy. The Andromeda Galaxy is our sister galaxy, one of the closest to us, and it's quite beautiful as well. Here's a 12,000 pixel image of the Andromeda Galaxy. What if I told you that the angular size of the Andromeda Galaxy was three degrees on our sky? How many times bigger than the full moon is that? What's the angular size of the moon? 0.5, six Point times five. bigger. 0.5 degrees. That's right. So this, this galaxy is six times larger than the full moon on your sky. Now, any one of us can see the full moon with their naked eye. Why can't you see Andromeda Galaxy? Not because it isn't big enough or it isn't magnified enough. It's got nothing to do with its distance of three million light years away. This thing is plenty large enough to see. The problem is it's too dim and you're not getting enough light from the object. And this is what the real purpose of a telescope is. Jace, when you said, I think this telescope is, is making the object smaller, that wasn't the right thing to say. You're basically condensing all of these rays of light, Campbell's soup style, into a much smaller beam so that you increase the brightness of the object. In other words, if your eye is about this big, it could only capture one or two or three of these rays per second. But by taking all of these rays and condensing them into your eyepiece, you're basically increasing the surface area of your eye. In other words, a telescope is a light bucket. Its job is twofold. One, make things brighter. Two, make the angular size appear larger, which is magnification. Today, you're gonna learn how to, you're gonna learn how to build a telescope. And you're going to do it by measuring the focal lengths of two different objects. Now, do you guys all have that piece of paper handy, the lab page with you? I need you to do a few things for me. On the page, I've got mine printed out already. It says that you're going to be working with an orange lens, and it says you're going to be working with a blue lens. Everywhere you see the word orange, I want you to cross it out and replace it with the word objective. That's your objective lens. Everywhere you see the word blue, cross that out and replace it with the word eyepiece. So I'll do that here for my, uh, my lab as well. Uh, and let me sort of show you guys with my share screen, how we should do that here. Okay, so share screen, iPhone, share. Okay, my pencil. Okay, so go over here, cross that out, make it objective. Make it eyepiece. Um, this entire section in the interest of time, because I went over today, we're going to skip that. But go down here to these two, cross that out, make this one objective, cross that one out, and make this one eyepiece. You guys get all that? Okay. All right, so here's our setup. Our setup goes a little something like this. Over uh, on the other side of the room, I have an optical bench set up. And on my optical bench, we are going to have a source of light our source of light is an incandescent light bulb. It's got a housing around it 
and the housing contains a sort of black triangle. And I've gone through great pains to set that black triangle up to be 0, 0.0 centimeters. Somewhere down the optical bench, we're going to have a lens, and then there is going to be a screen of white paper at the end. I am going to slide the lens back and forth until I make a sharply focused and inverted image of the cardboard triangle. That part should be pretty fun. And then we're going to attempt to measure two distances. The distance from the source of light to the lens, once it's in focus, will be called S. S stands for your source distance. The distance from the lens to the screen will be the image distance. And we are going to measure the source distance and the image distance in centimeters. Once we do this, and I want you guys to write this down in your margins, we can calculate the focal length of the lens using the lens maker's formula, which tells me that the focal length of my lens is the source distance times the image distance divided by the source distance plus the image distance. And you need to put that in parentheses. Did you guys write that formula down? Okay. The top S times I? That's correct. Is it not in focus for you, Tina? It's better now, thank you. Yeah, this camera has an autofocus feature which is really pissing me off and I've got to figure it out, but I, I just didn't manage to do it before the class today. And the bottom was S plus I? That's correct. And it's in parentheses, Kayla. Okay, so without further ado, let's go on over here. I'm gonna try to move my computer and my setup now. So. Over here, you guys can see my setup. I've got a light source and a bench. I'm going to use my uh, iPhone for this. Just hold on a second. I did try to do some prep work today and to set things up for us. Oh, the Indian food smells really good. And I really want some. Okay. <laughs> uh, just a second here, guys. Let's get a look at the setup. So I've got an optical bench set up. Let me, I'll get my, um, I'm gonna set this up so you can kind of see what I'm doing from the other side here. Um, I've got a source of light here. What with was that formula? Pardon? Can I have that formula again? I'm sorry. Oh, geez, okay. Yeah, hold on a second. Let's share my screen. iPhone, share. Okay, where's that tape? I need that roll of tape again. The formula is the focal length is equal S times I divided by S plus I in parentheses. Can you see that? Yeah, yeah, thank you. All right. Now hold on a second, guys. One thing I didn't do is I didn't bring my roll of tape. My roll of tape is needed to prop up my phone. Oh, shoot. I always forget something, no matter how well I try to prepare for it. Let me see if I can get a coffee cup. Just hold on here for a second. Get 
You guys see that okay? Let's take a look at our light source here. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna turn that on. Just give me a second. Okay. And I've got my data sheet here. You should probably have your data sheet and a calculator handy. Okay. <clears throat> So let me sit down, you guys can see what I'm doing. And here's my screen. I'm gonna slide my screen along to the end. When we take measurements here, class, I don't know if you can see this, a good old flashlight. We're gonna to have to look at where the zero point is. Let me point at this here. This zero records the position of our screen on this scale in centimeters. Now, I've tried to make sure that my cardboard uh, triangle, you see there, it's a little overexposed, but that's pretty close to zero centimeters. And here I've got my two lenses. This is my objective lens. I'm gonna place this somewhere on the rail, okay? You can see right now that there's an out of focus image of that cardboard triangle. Can you guys hear me okay? Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. All right. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slide the lens along. Uh, let's see here. Let me just see. The lens is kind of making an image of the urban triangle. I'm gonna slide this along until I get a sharp and crisp image of this cardboard triangle. Let's see if I can make that look good on my phone there. Can you guys see how the edge of that cardboard triangle is sharp and crispy? Okay, good. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna record our image distance. Now, let's look on the paper. Um, if the cardboard triangle is at zero centimeters and our lens over here is at, let's take a look. Looks like 59.9 centimeters. Then our first image distance is 59.9 centimeters. And we should write that down under objective under our first S, 59.9 centimeters, okay? Everyone got that in their first value? Okay, now look class, the image distance, the image distance goes from here where our lens is to there where our screen is. So we need to subtract these two distances. So over here, it looks like our zero lines up with, where is that? I'm gonna go with 89.6 centimeters. So it's 89.6 centimeters and we have to subtract 59.9 to get our source distance. You guys understand why we have to subtract, right? I have to subtract this value minus that value to get that distance in between. So let's subtract that up. Who's got a calculator? Eighty-nine point six minus fifty-nine point nine. Twenty-nine point seven. Yep, I get the same thing, 29.7. So let's write that down for, oh, auto timeout. Okay, 29.7. Okay, I, I guess we really don't have to write centimeters here because it has in centimeters up there. So if you want, you can leave the centimeters blank since it has the units up at the top. Okay, now we have to apply the lens maker's formula. So we have to multiply those two numbers. We have to do 59.9 times 29.7 over the addition 59.9 plus 
Watch me doing the calculator because I'm pretty fast at this. So I'll do 29.7 times 59.9, divide by open parentheses, 59.9 plus 29.7. First I close the parentheses and then I hit equals. And I get 19.9. We're gonna keep three sig figs because we have three sig figs there. Got that, class? Okay. Now for each new trial, what we're gonna do is we're gonna move the screen a little bit until it goes slightly out of focus. Notice that my cardboard is now fuzzy, you can't see it. And I'll take the uh, lens and I'll readjust it until it looks like it's in focus. So first let me focus my iPhone camera. Notice that's sharply in focus. If I get too far, it's messy. Right about there. That seems to be the sweet spot right there. You guys see how sharp and crispy the edge of that cardboard is? That means my triangle's in focus. Okay, let's take our next S distance. Let's look, ooh, that looks like 65.0 to me. Now the image distance is going to be, oh wow, 94.0 minus 65 or 29.0. Let's use the lens maker's formula again. You guys see that? Sixty five times twenty nine divided by sixty five plus twenty nine. Twenty point one. If we round to three sig figs. Okay. Now we'll do a third trial to try to get the best average possible. I'm going to slide the screen in this time. And I'm going to slide the lens along. I get a sharply focused image. Okay. Uh, focus, you bastard. 61.1. And this is 80, uh, sorry. 90.9 minus uh, 61.1. Our source distance is 29.8. Okay, let's apply the uh, lens maker's formula now. Let's get the focal length. 61.1 times 29.8 divided by 61.1 plus 29.8. Close and equals 20.0. Now class, can you tell me what the average of these three numbers is gonna be? Because I certainly can. That's gonna be 20.0. Yeah, because 20.0 is in the middle of 19.9 and 20.1. So our focal length here is 20.0 centimeters. I will put the centimeters there. Okay, next up. Um, I want to swap out my objective lens. So this was my objective lens, it's quite thin, and replace it with a slightly thicker eyepiece lens. And I want you to watch what happens when I choose my eyepiece lens. If I try to focus this thing, you guys can see that the cardboard triangle image 
is really, really tiny here. It's so tiny that I can't really focus on it well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide the lens back closer to my light source. I'm going to bring my screen closer. Because the lens has a shorter focal length, it makes the image brighter, but it also brings it into focus at a much closer distance. Ooh, I don't even know if I can get that for you guys. Let's see here. Anyways, it's sharply in focus there, but the iPhone's having a tough time focusing on it. Now, here we're going to move on to our eyepiece. Our source distance is 43.7 centimeters. <clears throat> Our image distance is 58.1 minus, oh, sorry guys, uh, yeah, 43.7. What's that work out to be? Fourteen point four. And now we can apply the lens maker's formula. So fourteen point four times forty three point seven divided by open parentheses fourteen point four plus forty three point seven close parentheses equals ten point eight. Next trial, move the lens even closer, move the cardboard even closer, so you guys can see this here. Make a sharp and crisp view of this thing. That's probably as, as sharp as I can get it. Man, I did not anticipate the contrast on the phone here. That's a nice crisp, sharp triangle. Okay. This reading is 39 point, what is that? 39.3. It's kind of more fun when you're doing this yourself than watching me. And uh, the image distance is 54.0 minus 39.3 is 14.7. And now we'll do the lens maker's formula. 14.7 times 39.3 divided by open parentheses 39.3 plus 14.7, close parentheses equals 10.7 this time. You guys got that? Thumbs up. One more trial. Let's a little bit. Ah, we'll be even closer. Can you guys see little bits of blur on the edge? That's called coma. Um, it helps to have everything to be on axis. Pretty, pretty well on axis here. Maybe a little bit too low. Oops. Ooh. Whoa, that's a big image there. Let's see if we can rock this big image, see what happens. There's my magnified cardboard. Why are they here? Oh yeah, look at that.
look how much bigger that is there. That's a greatly magnified cardboard image. That's pretty cool. All right, let's see if this works. Our S distance, 15.0. Our screen distance is 54.0, but we need to do 54.0 minus 15 is 39.0. <clears throat> Let's apply the lens maker's formula. 39 times 15 divided by open parentheses 39 plus 15. Once again, we get 10.8. The average of 10.7, 10.8, and 10.8 should probably be 10.766666, right? Because it's two thirds of the way. So we're just gonna round that up to 10.8 centimeters, okay? Okay, now, what you just saw there, students, this setup is a method that we can use using a nearby source of light, that light over there, to sort of get a crisp image on a screen, and the lens maker's formula helps us to calculate the focal length. Now there's another technique that I wanted to try with you guys that's pretty cool, where we can make an image of the outside world. And let's see if I can pull this off here it's a second method of measuring the focal length. And I, I couldn't try this last night because I set this up in the dark, but I'm first going to unplug my screen, or unplug my light source, and I'm gonna move my light source over to the side here, where it can't hurt me, because it's very hot. And I'm gonna look out the window, and I'm gonna try to make an image of some distant object like the buildings over there. So let's, screen. let's look out the window at these, at these distant buildings. And I want you to watch what happens to the lens maker's formula here. <clears throat> what if instead of using a nearby light source, like that cardboard triangle, the cardboard triangle is only maybe 30, 40 centimeters away from my screen. What if instead, I allowed my source of light to be light from those buildings way out there at infinity. Something kind of curious happens to your lens maker's formula when you do that. And I want you guys to watch here. So the lens maker's formula tells me that the source times the image distance divided by source plus image distance is the focal length of my lens. But what if I take my source distance and I let it be the buildings way out there on the distant horizon so that the number of centimeters that those buildings are away could be in the 20,000s, 30,000s, maybe even 100,000 centimeters away. They could be really far away. And therefore, I'm letting my source distance effectively go to infinity. Then my equation becomes infinity times the image distance over infinity plus the image distance. Now, you can actually work with infinities in mathematics. Infinity plus any number is just equal to infinity. But infinity times any number we wanna be more careful about because that's multiple numbers of infinities. My two infinities cancel out and I get that the focal length is equal to the image distance when my source is at infinity. But what the hell does that mean? Well, let me demonstrate. Let's take uh, this guy and let's remove him. And I kind of need to prop this up on something here. So let's find a, a book from my bookshelf. Some big crazy fat book like calculus or uh, mathematical methods for physicists. Let's try that one. All right. And let's stack this thing up. 
actually, you know what? I can use this pot right here. Uh, I don't know if this is going to work, but if it does, I'm going to feel pretty cool. Oh, yeah, there we go. Watch this. Now, it's tough because there's a lot of light coming in, but... Oh, this is about to fall over. Hold on. Hold on. I almost had a very bad situation there. Let me try to cut down on the amount of light coming in. You can see those tree branches. Can you guys see those tree branches there? Hold on a second. I need to get further away from the the light source. Okay, so check that out. Can you guys see that? Yes. I can make it sharply, folks. Look, you can see the building there, right? Mm -hmm. Can you guys see the building and the tree branches? Yep. Basically, my lens makes it so that when I get to the focal length, you can see a sharply focused image of the outside world. This is the principle behind a camera or even a camera obscura. You can actually make images of things. It works really nicely on a sunny day, especially when you're far, far away. Let's try one more example here. Um, let me try one more example and see if this will work. I'll hold up the lights there and I'll grab a very large magnifying glass. And I'll clear this board off. Okay. Let's see if I can make an image of those buildings. Oh yeah, that's great. Hold on guys, wait for this. Can you guys see that? Yep. Sorry, I have to a little bit. That was a little image of the West End Tower projected right onto my dry erase board with this magnifying glass. Pretty dope. In any case, this becomes another measurement of the focal length of our lens. Now here, we can see the trees are in focus. We know that the focal length is equal to the image distance. Let's just check out our image distance and see how that works. Um, this has a value of 79.7 centimeters. And we'll subtract it from fifty nine point eight centimeters. And you get about twenty point one centimeters. So it's roughly in agreement with the same focal length we got here using the nearby method. Now, in our class, I would normally make you take three values here and there, but I think we, we wasted a little bit of time today. I went overboard from what I intended to do, so we're going to keep this short and sweet. We're going to say that our averages came out to be 20.0 and 10.8, and I've demonstrated the technique, but I did not actually make you do the uh, infinity methods here, because partly because I talked, I went over my lecture today. So now, hold on, we're almost done. Let's put our name up here. And let's put AS1010 
Don't forget to put your section, whatever it is, okay? And on the back, I want to do a couple of quick calculations with you guys. Okay. So the optical design of our telescope is going to be called a refractor. And this isn't any type of refractor. This is a Keplerian refractor because Johannes Kepler invented this type of telescope, believe it or not. Um, the aperture is the diameter of my lens. So let's measure that out. Aperture is a fancy word for opening. Or it's the hole through which the telescope light comes through. Oops, I forgot to uh, turn off my um, screen sharing there. Looks like it's about 4.9. So our aperture is about 4.9 centimeters. Now, for our focal length of our telescope, we're referring to the objective focal length. The objective focal length was 20.0 centimeters. The eyepiece focal length was 10.8 centimeters. The focal ratio is sometimes called the f-stop of your camera, or the f number. And the focal ratio is given by the focal length of your objective divided by your diameter or your aperture. And in our case, that's 20.0 centimeters over 4.9 centimeters, which is approximately a factor of five, right? Because five times four is 20. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Sorry, it's a factor of four. And so the way that we write these focal lengths is we write them in a funny way. For, for f-stops for cameras, we call this f slash four. It's weird how they put the four on the bottom there. Sometimes people refer to the focal ratio of a camera or the f-stop as the speed of the camera because it tells you how bright the image is going to be and how much exposure time you're going to need. Obviously, if that number is smaller, you have a faster camera, which will expose quicker. Um, the resolution we're gonna skip, I'm gonna cover that in Wednesday's lecture. The surface area doesn't interest me. The magnification does. The magnification is the focal length of the objective over the focal length of the eyepiece which is a ratio of 20.0 divided by 10.8 centimeters. So it's not exactly, but it's pretty darn close to two times magnification. And now we're gonna to attempt to build our telescope. First, I'm gonna add these two numbers together, 20.0 and 10.8. And I'm going to get the sum of the focal lengths is 30.8 centimeters. And now I will construct my telescope over here using this ruler stick and these two clamps. Here's my eyepiece. And the lens that I just had, this is the objective lens, we'll go here. And you guys will watch and see, I'm gonna put my eyepiece at 20 centimeters. So I'll slide that down until it's at about 20 centimeters. Now if it's 30.8 away, I've got to go 10, 20, I've got to go to 50.8, and that's where I'll slide my eyepiece. And now I'll see if my telescope works, and I'll see if I can't let you guys take a peek through it.
Let me make a small adjustment here. Sorry, I think I got something wrong here. This is at 20 centimeters, 10, 20, 30.8, right? Okay. And here, if I hold my camera up to the lens, let's see if we can actually look at the telescope and check out this building. There you go. There's your functioning telescope right there. Now it's only two times magnification, so it's not that powerful of a telescope, but it's a telescope nonetheless. And I can look out and check out some people on the street. Okay. Well, look guys, that's about as good as I can do remotely, okay? So if it wasn't perfect, well, so be it. You've now completed your lenses and telescopes lab. Are we happy? Okay. Do you guys have everything that you need on this sheet? Or do you need to look at it again? Do you have all that for me? Our teach peeping on some fools. That's damn straight, Chris. <laughs> Remind me to save this chat log. <laughs> You got that? You got the first page? Got those values? You got this? All right, well, welcome to remote learning. You know what? It's not the same as doing it yourself, but it's going to have to do. Uh, Professor Brenton. Yes. Uh, just a quick question. I have. Um... The I just needed to co finish copying the magnification on um, on part B, and then the and then there was the bottom values on uh, like the averages of orange and blue on the on the the first page because I my for some reason my screen wasn't focusing and it was like super pixelated and blurry. Oh, okay, all right, all right. So I have those. Okay. Do you have all and, this uh, stuff? It was just it was just the magnification. It was hard for me to read. Uh, is that that's 20 over is that 20 over 10.8 yeah let me use my phone it was better when i used my iphone hold on okay just a second uh oh shoot oh Oh yeah, that's much better. I'm trying to hold this. All right. Are you good? Yep, I ended up getting it. Okay. I have some approximate values there, so. Okay, I'm sure anyone else who watches this later will have the same issues, so. Hey, you want us to take pictures of it right now and submit it, yeah? Yeah, why not? Like, let's just get it done with. I mean, my thing, guys, is I want to teach you about astronomy. Oh, that's great, Samantha. It's nice to hear. Hey, my goal is to teach you guys astronomy, but I have to grade you too, right? So I'm trying to just help you get something down that you can submit to me that says, hey, I watched this. I'm here. I was a part of it. And, uh, and I think I'm hoping you're still learning some stuff. And so... Um, Samantha, I'm going to work on the length. I did not mean to go over by one hour. Yet, if you think about it, our labs are supposed to last two hours. So think of it as our lab went the official length of time. I definitely did not mean to go this late, though. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, is everyone else uh, good here? I think our work is done for the day, and we can put, pat ourselves on the back, right? Yay. Woo. Okay. <laughs> uh, does anyone else have any uh, corona time? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's, I don't think that means what it means anymore. <laughs> um, <laughs> this is, is this is, is this homework? Uh, this is homework uh, six, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, no, 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 no. Hold on.
Homework six we're doing on Wednesday. We just did lab nine. Right. Okay. No, I got confused. Lab nine, lenses and telescopes. Okay. You I saw that? Yeah, I was, I was just going to submit it in the homework by mistake. <laughs> oh, please don't do that, guys. That was a huge issue. Under lab nine, lenses and telescopes, that's where you should submit it, okay? Make sure you go to your lab panel on uh, Blackboard. And this is for all the people listening at home later on. Submit your lab under lab tab, lab nine, lenses and telescopes. Don't screw up. Browse your computer, choose a JPEG, choose a PDF. Don't send me any weird files, right, Zach? I don't even know if Zach is still here anymore. Don't send me weird stuff. Okay, guys, do you want to ask any other questions or uh, are we done for the day? Um, yeah, I do have a question. Yep. Um, I'm looking for your email on, on, um, on Outlook and it's not giving it to me for some reason. It's been doing this with all my other professors. Um, could you tell me your email? Because I was going to email you those pictures of the moon that I never... Never got oh yeah, I would love that. Um, so let's just open up a um, a notepad here. Oh, actually, I can type into the chat log, can't I? Yeah. Let's go to the chat log, and that way you can copy it. B Britton, B R B B R I T T O N at C C R I dot edu. So I just put it into the chat log, Matthew, and you can probably copy and paste it right from there. You know why uh, none of your professor emails are showing up? It's because we're all emailing you from Blackboard and Blackboard doesn't leave our return address there. It's just part of the annoyance of the thing. Samantha? Yeah. Do you have anything to add or? Oh no, I'm good. Why is my mic on? It said Samantha is talking, but it must've just been- Oh, some... I was typing, my bad. That's okay. Okay, guys, I think our work is done here. I'll be sure to save this chat log, uh, save chat, and I'll be sure to save these recordings and I'll put them up onto the uh, Blackboard uh, and YouTube as soon as I can. I'm very sorry about the long lecture today, but we'll make sure on Wednesday we stop before one o'clock, okay? All right. I, I, sent, I sent them to you, there should, there should be six of them. Okay, you're just sending me the lab though, right? Yes, to send you the lab, but I, I just emailed you on, on um, over Outlook, uh, the, the moon pictures that I, oh, that I forgot to. Yes, sorry, Matthew, I want those moon pictures. Thank you, yeah. maybe we can get them next time, okay? Yeah, I, I, did, I did just send them to you. The, um, the last one is, is one of my favorites. The, I think I would probably say the, um, the last one that I took, and then the third one that I took. Uh, so the sixth one and the third one are probably the best. Okay. Uh, the other ones are a little, little bit blurry, but they're the best. Okay, dope. Well, I can't wait to see them, buddy. Um, maybe we'll put them on the JKB webpage. Okay, look, great hangs with you guys, all right? I'm going to go eat some lunch and work on some of your video stuff. Hey, Pooch, what's up, buddy? <laughs> I think that's how everyone feels right now, Matthew. That's how everybody's feeling. <laughs> yeah, this is my dog. Uh, what's his name? Her name is Bailey. Oh, Bailey. Bailey, I'm tired too, buddy. All right, well, at one point, I'm going to show you some of my raccoon videos. So that's, that's what I have to share. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to end the meeting now. See you later, guys. Peace All out. Right. Bye, Matthew. Bye, Bye everyone.